We were in our hometown of Anaganish when the world shut down. The flower aisle jumped ship at the grocery store, which is fine because I woke up one morning hating food. I now stocked our fridge solely with mid-century convenience foods. Cheese Whiz, packaged potato salad, pudding, popsicles, and veggie platters. It's all I could stomach. I dreamt we were having a boy. Everything feels so different from the last pregnancy. People seem to be talking about the weather less. I mean, I can't confirm because we stopped seeing friends on March 19th. My 98-year-old papa, the handsome man in the home movies you just saw, was a surgeon. He'd never seen anything like this in his life. We visit him at his window on sunny days and chat through the phone receiver. Time gradually passes. Mike says the skies are a lot quieter and darker. He spends most nights outside stargazing with a drink. As I lay on the couch wishing to have a particle of energy those stars diffused. You know, years from now, my memory will see these as romantic, peaceful moments shared between the two of us. Was it that one time Mike successfully hauled me off the couch as we sauntered to the end of the driveway, stretching our necks to stare at the twinkling blanket above? Only for me to give him the silent treatment as I swiftly waddled back up because he wasn't listening. Or was it that other one time? We sat on the washed up dock at my parents' cottage. There wasn't a sound to be heard. Aside from that car that was clearly traveling down the dirt road kilometers away. After arguing whether it was actually a car for about 10 minutes, I went to bed. Was I the best company these past few months? Probably not. Weird to think we've been lovers bound in bubble wrap, suffocating each other with the most nauseating behaviors for the last five months. Happy ending though. We got married, July 31st, just the two of us. Nausea, vomiting, working from home with a toddler, potty training, exploding screen time. As time passes, these details will be buried. Seasons change, as does the menu. Welcome powdered candy. You know, the classics, fun dip, garbage candy, rockets, and conveniently, Tums. The past few months have felt like decades, but July was a gust of wind. We're back in Iqaluit, and things are opening up. The fear of future unknowns is still very much alive. Why am I not panicking? I think about those hundreds of iPhone photos I took of my kid during COVID. What importance will they hold through time? Will they be valued like I treasure those endless reels of dad when he was a kid? Or will they just be stored as digital data on a tiny stick, collecting dust and clutter anxiety? I look at Greta. Like all kids her age, she lives strictly in the present. The past doesn't matter and tomorrow seems like it'll never come. What matters is what's happening at this moment. Her COVID experience boils down to the time she got to hang with her parents for monotonous, endless hours. As she relishes in these formative experiences, she's sure not to remember. Sweet moments, bitter times. The storyline is forever changing. The wisdom of retrospect isn't here yet. So this film is categorically already too emotionally charged. Maybe with time, the meaning will change. Change that comes with understanding and the context will alter its value. I see this patchwork of visual clutter as shaping my experiences before the story's a story. I see Papa's home movies in the framework of history. Simple but significant pieces from history. I'm never going back.
and memories alter as time goes on. Oh, we're having a girl. <laughs>